Retro is back. Well, that seems to be the way of thinking of many hi-fi manufacturers lately, especially those that manufacture loudspeakers. I noticed a few years ago that there was a trend of many buyers looking towards retro design when it came to sort of their amplifiers. And some of those designs of the early 60s, 70s do look absolutely fantastic. But as I say, that trend now has seemed to have amplified itself out a little bit and now has become attached to loudspeaker design. We've seen that with many manufacturers lately going for that sort of retro look. Now, when I think of a retro look, I basically grew up in the 80s. And when I first um, sort of come to realise what hi-fi was, everything you could buy back then was black ash. It didn't matter if it was your separates, they were black. Your hi-fi rack, I think the main brand back then was Target. What colour was it? Black. And your loudspeakers, what colour could you get? Again, it was just black ash. But these speakers I'm going to be showing you today, I think they look a little bit before the 80s kind of styling. To me, they look a little bit more kind of 60s or probably more into the 70s. It's no surprise really that people are liking retro designs and sort of going back to their childhood. Because to me, the 70s and 80s were a far more simpler lifestyle we had back there compared to sort of the kind of things we have in 2023. It's quite remarkable, the lifestyle of 2023. But when we think back to the 70s and the 80s and we realise how much more simpler life was back then, and that was how it was with hi-fi. I think people were, had a view to hi-fi which was much more simpler than what it is now because I don't think people were particularly into hi-fi back in the 70s and 80s, but everybody and every home would have a hi-fi system. Now, nobody really knew how to set up a hi-fi system. I know we did. I remember the first um, hi-fi system we kind of got and my dad went out and bought a Technic system. Lovely little thing it was. But the speakers, we just used to plonk on the floor. One one side of the cabinet. You know those cabinets, those furniture you used to get back then, all your hi-fi separates were, were behind a, a, a glass, weren't they? And uh, as I say, I remember the speakers, you just plonked one on the left-hand side and another one on the right-hand side on the floor. And I think that's what most people did in their homes. They just plonked their speakers on the floor. They didn't give no thought about stereo separation. It was just, right, let's plonk the speakers on the floor. Or let's plonk the speakers up there on that um, wardrobe. Or let's put one in that corner and one in that corner in the floor. Nobody really gave it much thought about their hi-fi system. But the thing is that the loudspeakers I'm going to show to you today, guess what? You can just plonk them on the floor. They are available with stands, but to me, they look better just sitting there on the floor. They don't seem to overtake your room like a big player of floor stands would do. Even though they're absolutely huge in size, the benefit of them, as I say, is you can just place them directly there on your, your carpet. And they look, as I say, absolutely pucker, really are beautiful looking speakers. Now, one thing about these speakers, uh, when I took a look at them, or should I say when I first opened the box of them, sort of the impression that I got from them doesn't relate to how um, they actually sound like, funnily enough. When I first looked at them, um, they kind of gave me the impression that they would be producing absolutely massive amounts of bass. Because when you look at the size of the bass driver in there, it's a big old bad boy in there. And you think, as I say, you're going to get this um, massive booming sound that's going to sort of overtake your room. Because the room that I've actually got these loudspeakers in isn't actually all that big. And as I say, I was a little bit worried that the, because of the size of the bass driver, that they were going to overpower the size of the room that I've actually got there. The other impression that I also got from this uh, loudspeaker was that the, the bass was going to be one of those type of basses that when you hear it, it absolutely sort of hit you in your chest. It would have so much impact behind it. But again, once I listened to them, I was quite surprised at how different my perception of when I looked at them, how I thought they were going to sound is when I to when I actually listened to them, how they did actually sound it was absolutely completely different. 
as many of you as will know, I used to live in Spain. And the look at these loudspeakers was the kind of loudspeakers that they would have in the carnival, in the ferias, which they would have there in Spain. Whenever you went to a feria in Spain, every sort of um, attraction you went by, that person would have their music on as loud as they possibly can. And they were all sort of playing them through loudspeakers that looked just like this. And it was an absolute racket. Everyone, as I say, had their loudspeakers on as Oh, uh, such a high volume trying to outdo each other. It's just a mishmash of sound. But as I say, the sound that these loudspeakers make is um, completely different to how I thought they were going to sound when I opened them up and put them on the floor. And as I say, it did come as a nice surprise when I actually did get to hear them, which is a good thing, really. Well, that's enough of me talking about them. I bet now you want to know what speakers I'm talking about. And obviously... <laughs> What do they look like? So, without any further ado, let's take a look at these fantastic new speakers from the Polish manufacturer Pylon Audio. Let's take a look together, shall we? The J20 is a two-way design. It features a 12-inch midwoofer with a classic paper diaphragm. The BMS compression driver responsible for the top is working in a short tube with a tractic profile especially designed by Pylon's engineers. The appropriate selection and efficiency of the transducers allowed Pylon to obtain a bandwidth division at around 1200 Hz. Thanks to the 8 ohm impedance and deficiency of 91 decibel, the J20s are easy to set up and drive. They can easily be driven by a low power tube amplifier, or to get the full potential of them and to really get their claws into the music, they can also be matched wonderfully with a transistor amplifier. The loudspeaker housings are made of massive MDF boards. Additionally, reinforced with eternal ribbon and trusses ensuring the appropriate rigidity of the structure. Pylon have optimised the casing to work both on a low support, which is included in the standard speaker, or an accessory of a speaker stand. The J20 is finished with a natural oil waxed American walnut veneer, emphasising their vintage aesthetics. The J20 is an outstanding concert-like performer. A combination of strong sound with unlimited freedom and the natural scale of instruments. The loudspeakers sound vital with a strongly marked foreground, rhythmic and strong bass and colourful highs. This set would create a friendly concert atmosphere during long hours of listening, as well as listening for background music and relaxing. The columns are designed to be used in rooms with a floor area of between 18 to 45 square metres.
So let's talk about the new Jade 20, shall we? Well, what can I say? Is that, like all Pylon Audio loudspeakers, they look and the build quality on them is absolutely top-notch, first class. As I say, when you look at all the loudspeakers that Pylon Audio make, the fit and finish and the paintwork and the woodwork on them is absolutely exemplary. And the J20s, are no exception. The build quality and the fit and finish on them is absolutely pucker, beautiful. They've done an absolutely fantastic job in capturing the essence of that retro 70s look and feel about them. However, I do have one little quibble with them, but you do get a slight warning when you open up the box. There is a slight, there is a warning within that box, and that is about the covers. The covers themselves look absolutely gorgeous. They look absolutely fantastic. And as I say, they captured the, the feel and the, the colour of the 70s. They've got the 70s vibe about them. They've captured it absolutely perfectly. The problem I have with the covers is I can't remove them. Or should I say, I found it very, very, and I mean very difficult to remove them. With one of the speakers, I, I struggled and I struggled. And eventually, I managed to prise it off without actually causing any damage at all. But on the other loudspeaker, I just could not get the cover off at all. It was so stiff, it just didn't want to come off. So, unfortunately, by pulling it as hard as I possibly could, I did actually manage to break one of the little plastics, or I don't know what you call them, one of the little plastic hooks, that you push into the hole on the loudspeaker. So this is a word of warning. Anybody that purchase, purchases the J20s, 
be very, very careful. And please keep in mind how difficult it is to remove the covers. As I say, when you open up the box, there is a piece of paper in that box explaining how you remove the covers. And even if you follow the instructions of how to remove the covers, it is, well, yes, I don't even want to think about it, how difficult it was to remove those covers. As I say, I'm going to have to contact File and Audio to send me a new piece of plastic because, as I say, I managed to damage one of mine. That's the only quibble I can really say about the loudspeaker because apart from that, as I said, they are absolutely gorgeous looking loudspeakers and they are big loudspeakers and they are pretty heavy. I think they're 20 kilos each per loudspeaker. So it's quite a chunky, big loudspeaker. But as I say, the beauty of them is you can just place them there on your carpet, fit and forget, and that's it. You can start, enjoy listening to them. So how do they sound? Like I said before, to me, they don't sound how they look. How I envisioned they were going to sound is completely different in real life to how they sound. Now, I'm not the greatest person in the world when it comes to explaining sound. However, I'm going to try my best and explain how the sound is of the J20. Now, the bass, as I say, I, I thought by looking at the size of the driver that it was going to be overpowering my room. And I also thought the bass was going to be very, very impactful. The kind of bass, you know, when it sort of produces a bass note, it sort of thumps you in the chest. You don't get that with the J20s. You get a nice, warm, deep, rich bass, but it's not a big, strong, powerful bass, how you, as I say, how you envisage it's going to sound like when you see the size of the driver, if you understand what I mean. There is bass, but just not the kind of bass that you're kind of expecting, the depth of that bass. Now I'm going to try and compare the sound of the J20 to the Jasper line that um, Pilon Audio also make. I think the Jasper line is slightly more expensive once you take into consideration that you've got to add stands. So I say once you've had the stands to the um, Jasper, it sort of does elevate the price above the J20 a little bit more. But sonically, the, um, the Jaspers have more detail in the treble. They're more airy. They're sort of a more of a hi-fi type of sound loudspeaker. There's more separation between instruments. There's probably a sort of a larger sound stage. It's more delicate sounding. It produces more detail, more information. But the Jade is supremely musical. It just makes everything sound so good. It is such an enjoyable listen to listen to these loudspeakers. Now, if you're the type of person that wants ultimate detail, that wants to hear every single nuance in the recording, these speakers probably aren't for you. As if you want all kinds of detail, what happens over there, what instruments there to the left, what instruments behind you, what chairs squeaking, what person's breathing. If that's the kind of sound you want where you need, as I say, 100% detail, the J20s are not for you. The, day, the J20 is a loudspeaker that, to me, it doesn't matter what genre of music you listen to, everything sounds good and enjoyable. You can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the music, of, because to me that's what it's all about. Enjoying the music, not sitting there concentrating, seeing if you can pick up every minor detail in the recording. No, it shouldn't be like that. It's about enjoying the music. And as I say, it doesn't matter what type of music you put on, what genre of music you put on. The Jades have the magic trick of making everything sound good. You just sit down in your chair, put on your music, Relax and enjoy the sound of the loudspeaker. I mean, what more could you really ask for? The vocals sound real. It's a very natural sound in loudspeaker. It's nothing harsh. The detail, it's got the amount of detail you need. You don't really, I feel, you don't, you don't really need any more detail. It doesn't need to be any brighter. It does everything that makes music sound enjoyable. You just put them on the floor... Sit your bum down on a sofa, put your favourite music on, be it a vinyl, be it a CD, and just start enjoying the music. I mean, what more could you really ask for? It does the stereo imaging, it does the depth, it does the realism, it does everything to me that you could ask for in a loudspeaker. 
So it looks good. It sounds good. And the price is also extremely reasonable. I highly recommend these loudspeakers. They are a fantastic, very enjoyable loudspeaker to listen to. As I say, my only quibble is that the covers are slightly difficult to remove. Apart from that, I think anybody that buys these loudspeakers will be extremely happy with the Pylon Audio J20s.